Colin helped to revolutionize the way online dispute resolution is being handled. He works for eBay, um, and he's the director of online dispute resolution. He is going to be beamed in, um, and we have a recorded video of him, but then he'll actually be online for questions that we have immediately. So first of all, we are going to watch the film, uh, the video recording of him. Okay, that's ready to go. Thank you for the opportunity to present, uh, however briefly, uh, to the Smart Tools for Smart Power conference. I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you in person, but uh, I, I put together sort of a brief video with uh, some of the things that I would have presented if I was there in person, and hopefully uh, the communication over Skype will enable us to have some Q&A. So I know that uh, people's tolerance for video is, is much lower than their tolerance for actually looking at a live person, so I'm going to try and keep this short and to the point. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is sort of what online dispute resolution is. Now, this, uh, those of you who are uh, at this meeting may or may not know about alternative dispute resolution, which has been around for about 30 or 40 years. And uh, that's the, the uh, use of um, techniques outside of the courthouse to help people resolve their dispute. Things like mediation, arbitration, negotiation, Online dispute resolution is a, an outgrowth of the alternative dispute resolution field, which uh, explicitly leverages uh, information and communications technology to help people resolve their issues. And uh, what o ODR has evolved into uh, more of uh, an application of information yeah, yeah, and communications technology to conflict transformation. I see it. Yeah. So it's not so much about just narrowly resolving disputes, it's much more about managing conflict, transforming conflict and then moving towards resolution if that's appropriate for the particular okay. uh, instance. I, I put together a brief overview of various online dispute resolution okay, issues no that problem. are happening around the world. So, uh, and, I, and I'll just do a quick tour. For instance, in British Columbia, Ernie Theason at Smart Settle is using game theory to resolve complex right. water resource disputes. In Washington, D.C., Dan Rainey at the National Mediation Board okay. is okay. using online dispute resolution to address complaints filed by wounded veterans. Across the Atlantic, in Berlin, Matthias Trenell is using online dispute resolution to address disputes over the use of public space. And down by the Mediterranean, in Israel, Dan Ryman is actually generating dynamic juries to resolve disputes. Now over in India, Chitu Nagarajan is using online dispute resolution to resolve disputes between microfinance lenders and loan recipients. And just a little bit further south, Sanjana Hatotua, who some of you may know, is using online dispute resolution to monitor ceasefires. And then in the Philippines, Claro Parlade has created an online multi-door courthouse where uh, disputants can get access to whatever service is most appropriate. But this is just a sampling to give you a sense of sort of the richness of uh, the field. There's more than 60 private online dispute resolution providers around the world, and there are many, many government efforts focused on how can uh, online dispute resolution techniques be used in a wide variety of contexts. So eBay was one of the first companies to get interested in online dispute resolution. Uh, and because of eBay's size, eBay is the largest marketplace in the world. We have more than 240 million users. And if, when I first got to eBay, you know, eBay still very much thought of itself as a for-profit company, like the world's largest store. But the more time that I've spent at eBay, I've been here for almost five and a half years, I think that eBay is, is almost more like a city or a community or even a nation than uh, a for-profit company. Uh, there are stakeholders, there are, there's a marketplace, there are crimes, both uh, there are civil infractions. So really what I'm doing at, at eBay and PayPal is building the civil justice system for this sprawling global marketplace. And this civil justice system does more than 40 million, uh, resolves more than 40 million disputes each year. So eBay's role is kind of unique. Um, eBay sells nothing, eBay buys nothing. We, we don't have any inventory or warehouses, and so there's no product other, other than the website, which we're in charge of maintaining. Our job is to make sure that things run smoothly, and what that means is uh, eBay has an opportunity to really play a convening role. In the early days at eBay, 
Before eBay had learned much about how to deal with these disputes, eBay just acted as a referee. And any time a buyer reported a problem, eBay would blow the whistle and send the two parties to their corners and then um, try and engage in shuttle diplomacy to figure out what the appropriate outcome should be. But over time, I think as eBay's become more sophisticated and learn more about uh, disputes, the kinds of the best way to resolve these disputes, eBay has evolved into more of a facilitator, trying to get the buyer and seller to communicate directly to work out their problems. Uh, so this particular perspective made eBay understand the importance of dispute resolution very, very early on. Um, and uh, that's one of the reasons why eBay has been at the forefront of ODR for the last 10 years. So over that time period, eBay has uh, created a wide variety of online dispute resolution tools and learned quite a few lessons about what works and what doesn't work. And while I don't have time to share all of the lessons that, that, that I've learned and that the company has learned over that time, I will share um, two lessons that uh, have led us towards the creation of a new tool that we're very excited about called the Community Court. And the first lesson is that on eBay, and I think this is just part of human nature, but it's particularly true online, uh, people enjoy to be judges. They enjoy evaluating the performance of other people. Uh, that's one of the reasons why on American television all day now it's uh, Judge Judy and Judge Roy Brown people enjoy judging things uh, and actually it's quite pleasurable to evaluate the actions of uh, other buyers and sellers on eBay and uh, Judge Judy herself has taken on the challenge so here's a short video that uh, demonstrates how, how fun it can be to uh, evaluate someone's activities on eBay Karen Ann Davenport and her daughter Shannon are suing Kelly Filkins for scamming them on eBay. The plaintiffs claim they paid Kelly for two cell phones, and in return, she sent them two pictures of cell phones. All right. Mrs. Davenport, what did you purchase at this auction? We purchased two i580 cell phones. For how much? One was 201.50, and one was 255.56. And do you have the ad that you? I've got both. Responded to. Yes, it's two different. I don't do that electronic stuff. I go to a store. There's two stuff. different auctions. <laughs> okay, so it describes the item, etc. Headset jack, yes. Phone design clamshell. Weight, 4.90 ounces. This is all in your ad? Yes. Okay, so you won and you sent her money. Correct. And what did you get in return? I got the envelope, and I got um, these two sheets of paper. Can I see it, please? Sent her your money, and you. this envelope came Correct. along with these pictures of the cell phone. That's exactly what was in there. So you are responsible for this? Yes. Explain it. Uh, it states very clearly in the auction that this is for a photo only. I sent her the photo. Show me where it says that. Show me where it says that. Right here. Show me. Show me. The paper that she just handed you that I sent her, that was part of the... Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. I want you to... Listen. Listen to me carefully. Kelly, the reason your husband is not here is because he sent you here to the lion's den because he was a coward. That's why he sent you. That's not true. Oh, that's why he sent you. You are married to... Listen to me, own. Kelly. You are married to a coward and a scamming coward. And if you came here to defend that position, to me, you're going to be unsuccessful because you are a thief. Don't answer me. <laughs> what I don't understand is somebody with the unenviable position of being in your position right there today, why you would risk humiliating yourself in front of 10 million people is something that is totally beyond me. You are an outrageous person. You have to find something else to do with your time constructively other than make children who are going to grow up with no moral compass like their mother. Judgment for the plaintiff and the amount of $5,000. That's all. Thank you. So a second lesson that um, eBay has gleaned over this time is that there's a lot of power in large numbers of people. Uh, and in Silicon Valley, this is referred to as crowdsourcing. But if lots of people 
are asked to answer a relatively simple question, the aggregate of all of those decisions together can be better than uh, the, the opinion of one extremely smart or savvy individual. Uh, a perfect illustration of that phenomenon is who wants to be a millionaire? So here's a clip demonstrating uh, exactly how that, how that can work. The anterior cruciate ligament is located where on the human body? Neck, knee, jaw, spine. I know this audience is smarter than me. And at least a couple of them know the answer. And if only those couple could push and no one else. If only that could be the case. I'm going to some of the audience. Let's do it. Audience, we need your help for Jack. If you're ready, on your keypads using A, B, C, or D, vote now. Big spread. You, you've given them the power. Big um, spread there. 86%. Thank wow. Thank you. Uh, I'm going B. Final answer. Knee. 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 The right answer. Hold on. So taking these two lessons together that people enjoy to be uh, to evaluate the actions of others, uh, especially within, within the eBay marketplace, but also on the internet uh, writ large, and also the fact that um, the aggregate of many, many small decisions can be more valuable than, um, than a single decision. Um, that led us to create something called the Community Court. And I'd just like to spend the rest of my time sort of briefly describing the Community Court and talking about how it works and, and some of the applications that, that, that we've put it towards. Um, the Community Court uh, right now at eBay is used for resolving feedback disputes. So if a seller receives a feedback that they think they didn't deserve, they can appeal that decision to the Community Court and they'll have an opportunity to explain why they think the feedback was inaccurate. And then the buyer has a similar opportunity to explain. They can upload audio, they can upload video, they can uh, upload images, um, but they have an opportunity to fully make their case as to why uh, both the seller and the buyer have an opportunity to fully explain why they have the perspective that they have. And once all that information is collected, we then share that case with an, uh, a randomly selected panel of eBay community members. And the eBay community members, they're provided some guidance by the community court as to uh, how they should think about this decision. They evaluate the information from the seller and they evaluate it from the buyer and they render a decision for it. So we're very excited about this within the eBay context, but this notion of crowdsourcing dispute resolution is uh, very exciting in many other contexts as well. And we are partnering with uh, some, some very large sites um, from Facebook to Elance to uh, a variety of nonprofit activities as well to expand this concept and use um, the idea of uh, the community court to deliver justice. So I've put a lot of ideas out there, and I think it's probably uh, time to end the video portion and go to the Skype Q&A. But just to share a few conclusions, um, online dispute resolution, I think, is, is very connected to um, ICT and peace building. Um, it, it's, a, it's a vibrant and growing segment of the ADR field, and we're learning a lot about how technology can really transform conflict management. Um, applications are constantly evolving, and there's so many new entrants around the world uh, reshaping what ODR is. Uh, it's really uh, created a huge wealth of experience that um, everyone at the conference who's interested in using technology for peace building uh, can, can uh, access and benefit from. Um, the other exciting thing about ODR is it's driven by technological innovation. So every time there's a, a new breakthrough, be it um, Ajax web technologies or the Palm Pre or uh, telepresence, um, teleconferencing, all of those innovations serve to further refine and expand the definition of what ODR can be. Uh, and there's no doubt that, that today's ODR, the things that we're doing and we're calling cutting edge applications, will look primitive, laughably primitive probably, in five to ten years. So uh, online dispute resolution and the tools within online dispute resolution really represent the cutting edge of technology and conflict resolution. And I, I would um, love to serve as a liaison to help connect up some of the uh, attendees at the conference with 
various members of the ODR field who are doing um, projects that are relevant or of interest to everyone in, in currently in the room. And here's a couple other resources. The real hub for the online dispute resolution field is the website odr.info. There's an embarrassing amount of information there in terms of papers and um, a blog that runs back for several years tracking all the major developments in the field. Um, but we also have the UN Working Group on ODR, which has met um, for the last nine years all around the world, and uh, an international workshop series on ODR. And we also have a, a yearly conference called ADR Cyber Week that's run for about 11 years, and uh, we get thousands of attendees to come in and talk about uh, the current state of the ODR field. So, and if any of you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email address is crule at ebay.com. I, I appreciate your attention uh, to this static video, and let's begin the interactive portion, and uh, I look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you. All right. Colin, can you hear us? Yes, I can okay. hear you. Great. You're here virtually with us using all this technology. We have two Absolutely. questions from the audience here. Thank you very much for a uh, disemboweled but very interesting presentation. Um, in your ODR, uh, with many people participating, how do you envisage preventing, shall we say, in, in interested third parties from involving themselves in some way or biasing the, or cutting out people from becoming involved in the overall decision-making process? I think you know what I'm talking about, but how, Absolutely. how do you prevent that? Well, it's a great question. Uh, the first thing is, when I said it's a randomly We have time for one more question. Yes, uh, Pauline Baker from the Fund for Peace. How do you ensure compliance after a judgment is made? Well, that's a very interesting question. Thank you, Polly. Uh, at, at eBay and PayPal, it's actually a little bit easier because uh, we have absolute enforcement power. PayPal it has the ability to move money. Uh, when a dispute is reported, we actually freeze the funds in the account of the seller pending the outcome of the, uh, of the resolution process. Um, in the example that I gave, the community court focused on, on feedback. Obviously, eBay controls the feedback database. So whatever decision is rendered by the community court, eBay has the ability to go into that database and make whatever changes are required. But you put your finger on, I think, the, the key issue in determining the success of an ODR initiative, which is enforceability of outcome. Uh, what we learned is that disputants are not interested in going through a process uh, just because they want to have a conversation. What they want is resolution. So it's very important to be able to take the outcome of a resolution process and actually make it matter. And all the successful uh, ODR pro programs out there have found some way to uh, provide that enforceability. Okay, Colin, thank you so much for being with us here and for your fascinating you. presentation. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And for sharing your email so we can contact you. That's great. Thank you.